We continue to look to the U.S. Supreme Court, which could at any time move to overturn Roe v. Wade. In reaction, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer ordered a vote this week to codify the findings of Roe in the law. Due to razor-thin majorities in the Senate, Democrats do not have the votes needed to succeed in their efforts to force all states to allow abortions up until the moment of birth. Majority Leader Schumer has called the Supreme Court justices and Republicans in Congress, quote, extreme. This comes as we continue to wait for the official decision in the Dobbs case. Joining us now is the head of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus, Senator Steve Daines of Montana. Senator, thanks for joining me. The ironically named Women's Health Protection Act is up again for a vote in the Senate. Can you tell us more about this extreme pro-abortion bill? Well, first of all, they've labeled it the wrong way. It should be called the Abortion on Demand Until Birth Act. This is a barbaric and radical abortion bill uh, the Democrats, sadly, want every single state to be a late-term abortion state. And of course, sadly, this would put the United States in the same category of just seven countries in the world that permit late-term abortions, including China and North Korea. The United States would be the most dangerous place in the world for an unborn baby to be if the Democrats have their way. So this is a, it's a horrible, horrible bill that uh, uh, I'm just, it, it's sad to see that it would come to this, that you would see this on the floor of the United States Senate. Mm. And since the Supreme Court leak has happened of Justice Alito's draft, pro-abortion Democrats have expressed outrage at the idea that now people in the states will get to decide what their laws on abortion should be. You have said that if this decision stands, it will allow the court to correct a historical injustice and return the power to the American people. Talk to me a little more about that. Well, that's exactly what the facts are, what the truth is with this, uh, this draft opinion that was leaked that Justice Alito wrote. Uh, if that indeed is the final decision of the court, what that decision does is it returns the power from nine men in black robes from 1973, it returns the power to elected officials. That's where it belongs. It belongs with our state legislatures to debate about what protection we want to put in place for babies. Uh, it still will belong as a federal debate here in Washington, but the bottom line is you're not going to have this uh, mandate that came down from the court, this right, so-called right that was created by the United States Supreme Court. So this decision from the Supreme Court will be profound, uh, and this leak, by the way, I need, need to add, is outrageous. This was done simply to intimidate members of the court. And we're seeing that, sadly, uh, as we speak. We're seeing these protests. We're seeing death threats. The fact that Supreme Court justices have to have uh, ramped up protection. Do you realize in the last 48 hours, we just quickly passed a bill in the United States Senate allowing more security protection for Supreme Court justices. Mm. Let's talk a little more about that breach of trust. Could you give us an update on the investigation into who might have done this? Are we going to find out what consequences could that person or persons be facing? Yeah, well, I'm confident uh, they'll get to the bottom of this because the, the list of individuals that could have leaked that is a, is a short list. Every Supreme Court justice has four law clerks. So it's not a big list. I'm confident they'll get to the bottom of who it was. And, uh, and in terms of penalties, that remains to be seen. But frankly, the damages that are already been uh, created on the court are something that will be, I think, almost irreparable. It, we violated the trust of the court. Remember, uh, Justice Ginsburg, who had very different views from Justice Scalia, uh, they still could work together in a collegial way. They could trust each other. The court has to deal with a lot of confidentiality when they deliberate. That has not been violated in this, in this manner of a breach to this magnitude until what happened last week. So it's, it's, it's really, again, another sad moment in our history of our country where those who seek to intimidate justices to get their particular outcome would basically do whatever it takes, including breaching the confidence of the United States Supreme Court. Well, we will certainly continue to track that. And just one final question for you. As we wait for the final decision on the Dobbs case, what more can we expect from these abortion activists in D.C.? And what are you doing on your end as head of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus to ensure that we're protecting these unborn children? 
Well, th this battle only increases. And, and I want to thank so many of uh, your listeners and viewers who've been praying diligently for decades uh, for this moment. Uh, this means now that we the battle goes out to the states. The battle will stay here in Washington, but now it expands to the state legislatures, our governors. It's more important than ever for our pro-life activists to even double down in their efforts of working hard in their states to ensure that we protect the lives of these babies and their moms. So this is not a time to sit back. Uh, yeah, we should celebrate uh, this, this pending ruling, but it is time to double down our efforts here to protect the lives of moms and babies. Mm, and we will continue to pray and pray for you, Senator, as you defend the unborn. Thank you so much, Senator Steve Daines of Montana. Thank you. To continue the conversation, we're joined by House Republican Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona. Representative Biggs, thanks for joining me. You've been very active on Twitter in reaction to the Supreme Court leak and all that's ensued since. I would love if you could share more details about your tweet saying that pro-abortion radicals are breaking the law by picketing outside of the Supreme Court justices' homes. Yeah, there's federal law under, under Title 18 that pro, uh, prohibits uh, protesting uh, in front of federal judges' homes. I mean, just kind of what we, we what you just said. And the idea behind that law is to prevent intimidation of uh, judges who are considering weighty matters by mobs of angry people. Uh, you want an independent judiciary, and uh, the time to influence the judge is when you're filing briefs and your attorneys uh, and representatives are, are making arguments, not going to their homes and intimidating them and by the way, it, this goes beyond just protesting in front of their houses. They've received death threats. Their families have received threats, and they've had to, they've they've actually had to move um, uh, uh, Justice Alito. Right. And Democrats on Capitol Hill are clearly outraged, and that comes as no surprise. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the draft opinion by Justice Alito, quote, slapped women in the face. She even said we need to be prayerful about finding ways to keep abortion legal. What are your thoughts on her remarks? I, I find them to be highly offensive, to be praying to God uh, to provide ways to abort um, innocent, unborn babies in the womb. I mean, to me, that is the height the height of, of inhumanity uh, is to basically justify an evil conduct by relying on God. And that's what they're doing here. These, these, these little uh, innocents are, are uh, basically uh, in the care and nurture of the, the mother in the womb, and, and uh, she's praying to God. And she says, we need to pray to God to um, invoke basically murderous appetite on these poor innocent children. Mm. And what are your thoughts, Representative Biggs, on the breach of trust at the court with this leak? Do you think it's possible we find the person who leaked this draft? Can we really rely on the Department of Justice to do anything about all of this? What do you think? Well, I, I never uh, rely on the, the senior leaders of the DOJ, but um, Chief Justice Roberts has enlisted the marshal's office to come in and to investigate. I hope we find out who it was. Um, I've been sitting in a hearing, and, and the audacity is, is that Democrats have been sitting in this hearing saying, oh, well, you know, it's, uh, it had to be a conservative because it would lock in these conservative votes. Those conservative votes uh, are locked in already uh, in the Alito draft, and that's, that's why it's, it's the draft. And so uh, I don't believe it was a conservative person who leaked it, but whoever leaked it undermined the credibility and trust of the Supreme Court, and they, they need to be found out, and they should probably be fired uh, and disciplined otherwise. Mm. Appreciate your thoughts on all of this. Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona, thank you. Thanks, Prudence.